Hello everyone, it's Lori Ballin, and today we're rolling into a new series playlist here called What Should I Be Doing With My Real Estate Agent Website? All right, so for those of you that are new to me, I own a real estate business here in Las Vegas, Nevada called Lori Ballin Team. We serve Las Vegas, Henderson, and North Las Vegas. And um, I generate all of my business from the internet. And so this is a combination of uh, everything from the search engines, which is uh, something I, I live in and love very much, uh, social media platforms and social media marketing, including paid advertisements, pay-per-click marketing, such as Google AdWords. And I do a large amount of business also through uh, real estate agent referrals that also come through the internet. So I still count those into my web lead bucket because that's how they all transpire. And that's generally how the, how the agents are finding, finding out about me. So um, I feel very passionate about uh, generating leads online and especially for real estate. I do happen to also own a marketing company called Ballandbrands.com and I will get you, whoops, Ballandbrands.com and we actually build real estate agent websites that are WordPress powered and IDX driven and they're both buyer and seller lead generation systems. We also manage pay-per-click services and help you write your content for your website. So if you are looking for more help with your platform or you just don't want to do this stuff yourself and you'd like to hire out pieces of it, check us out at balandbrands.com. Now, I am a trainer first. I'm a teacher first before ever a salesperson. So I spend a lot of time giving everything away. And you can follow my blog at lauriballin.com for lots of great information I give out all the time and also share from other experts and interviews. I also have a face, several Facebook pages and Facebook groups. And then I have a training system at ranklikeaboss.com. All right, so there's lots and lots of ways that you can uh, take this journey and learn right along with me. And so today I want to talk about what you should be doing with your real estate agent website. So I'm going to do an overview in this video and then I'm going to break them down for you in this series into individual components so you can get more of the real deal application and how to um, in, in those other videos. Okay. So what should, what should you be doing with your real estate agent website? Well, a quick summary of what you should be doing is one content. All right. And content is going to be pages on your website, community pages and neighborhood pages. It's going to be blogging. So I'll scroll down here to my blog here and I'm going to break this all down for you in a separate video. And really it should be in a couple parts. Uh, one is real estate related content. So these would be things like your real estate market report, um, explanation blog post of, of the architecture and styles of homes and things in your market. And then we also do hyper local blogging, which is, um, you know, kind of like uh, being the expert in the area that would include things like things to do in your area, places to go, um, holiday, things to do during the holidays, places to take a date, um, any kind of special events or covering businesses, um, parks, schools, you know, all this information around living in your area. And I'll give you a little tip. If you're, um, wherever you are, you want to be breaking down your website into geographic locations and talking about these locations as much as possible. So if you're in an area that refers to Northwest, Southwest, West or East, or, um, it, or, or they're called by names, uh, certain communities or zip codes, you want to be building lots and lots and lots of content around those hyper local areas. And that'll include both real estate and general hyperlocal information about those areas, which I'm going to break down on um, in this series as well. Okay, so so content is going to be 
Um, in this particular case, it's going to be written content in the form of blogs. Now, those can also contain video and they can contain podcasts and and decks, slide share type things. All of those can be included and we'll break those down when we get into the different media options when you're creating your content, okay? So you're creating community pages, you're creating real estate blogs, you're creating hyper-local blogs, okay? So these are things that you should be doing on your real estate website on a super regular basis. For me, every day when I get up, my morning is spent uh, typically on real estate. So I'll give you an example, a real life example here. I did one this morning. And this morning I did a real estate market report on a small community. Well, I wouldn't say it's super small because, but in Vegas, I did a, um, I did a market report on a community here in Vegas. And my goal was, you know, I really want to rank higher for Anthem Country Club, this, this luxury community in my um, area here. It's actually in Henderson, Nevada, which is about 40 minutes away from Las Vegas. And uh, so I did this little real estate market report linking to the other pages on my website and linking to the one I want to rank higher. Then I took this blog, blog post and I put it on a real estate blog platform. I put it on a Facebook article. I put it on a LinkedIn article. I put it on a press release article, all linking back to the main Anthem Country Club page I want to rank for. And this page has a canonical, REL equals canonical um, tag for those of you that wonder about duplicate content, uh, indicating to Google that this is the primary uh, source, which doesn't always mean they'll rank this page over another, but it does tell them that I, I, I'm aware that there's duplicate content on the web. This is the one that is the original. And, um, and that's how I kind of roll these out. And they work tremendously well tremendously well to generate backlinks to your website, to get more traffic, to get more eyeballs, okay? And so then what I have, and I'm gonna cover this in depth in another series, I have an automation uh, set up here. What's important is after you create the content, you're gonna to wanna to be broadcasting and publishing about your real estate agent website. And so that means getting it out on social media platforms right? We'll talk about advertising in another portion, but let's just say your general organic uh, publishing that you're not paying for. So what I have is I have something set up through Zapier, which you can find right here, zapier.com. And through Zapier, I have these little zaps and it basically is like an if this, then that um, software. And so what it does is through Buffer, which is a social media posting tool, what I set up is these automated uh, processes that say, if I publish a blog post on my WordPress real estate agent website, then through Zapier that has this formula, then publish it to Buffer and put it in the queue. And then the queue on Buffer here um, has all of these uh, ability to share out your posts through, um, through Twitter and through Pinterest and through Google Plus and through Instagram and uh, LinkedIn and all of these different platforms that you have the ability to share on. Then what it does is it actually has analytics, which are pretty cool, that show you um, how many comments you got, how many likes you got, how many clicks, what your reach was. So for those of you that are studying your analytics, you're able to do that. And then you can also sort these by the most popular posts and then rebuffer them. So I can say, okay, out of the last 30 days, which one's got the most clicks or which one's got the most comments or which one's got the most shares and I can rebuffer it and it'll send it back out. But this is all done through my automation software so that I'm not sitting there worried about where I'm going to make my next Facebook post or my next tweet. And of course, you do get less organic reach when things are posted through a social posting tool versus natively posting on 
the uh, social media channel. However, I don't have the time to sit and post everything organically on Instagram and on Twitter and on Snapchat and on whatever. So this is the lesser of the evils, I guess, is to have this automation software set up. If I really want to get um, organic reach and I'm, I'm going to go in there and just make a straight post, so I'm going to not include a link probably and, um, and generate comments and clicks and shares and then put, maybe put some links in the comments versus in the actual post. But that's another video altogether. So again, what you should be doing with your real estate website, building out your community pages, real estate blogs, uh, including real estate market reports, hyper-local marketing, and sharing out through all of your social networks and reblogging, republishing on other blog sites where appropriate and how appropriate, such as Active Rain, the real estate channel, LinkedIn Pulse, which is a free blog, Medium, that type of thing. And, and again, I'm gonna in this series, I'm gonna cover how to do that specifically. Okay. What else you should be doing with your real estate agent website? You should be offering a home value estimate. Okay. Now, again, as I told you, my company, Ballon Brands, builds these real estate agent websites. And the one you're looking at is called Brew, which stands for Ballon Real Estate Website. So think about it like a cup of coffee. This is your brew. And with the brew, we integrate a home value estimation tool. We work directly with listings to leads. And um, the way we set up all of our websites, you actually own your own website free and clear. It's yours. We're not going to keep you in any kind of contract. We help you build it and it's yours. And then each one of the third party services that provide anything on the website, such as this home value estimation tool, listings to leads, you set up your own account with them. You pay them however much you want to pay for the tool. They have a bunch of different tools and different levels. And then we integrate it for you. We put it all together for you and put it on your website, this particular one. And so it allows you to have an instant home valuation. Now, the drawback is the home valuation tool is powered by Zillow. This is where you can all boo if you want to. Um, meaning the actual home value estimate part that comes in after the fact. But here's the deal. Everybody knows now that you can go online and get a home value estimate. And they also know that Zillow is the primary one that provides those. So they actually Google all the time Zillow home values. How much is my house worth Zillow? That type of thing. So I always look at if you can't beat them, join them. And this, you're not paying Zillow, you're paying listings to leads for this particular tool, okay? And if you look at my links in this video or on the, um, on the blog, you can get trials of a lot of this different software. Even if you don't have one of my websites, you can definitely still use these tools. So I'll give you a little link. And some of these links will get you a coupon or a discount or an extended free trial. Some of them don't do anything, but try out the link. And um, some of them are affiliate links that also benefit me. Try them out, set up your trial. Okay, so you want to be offering a home value estimate because people are going to go get one and you might as well be the source. And the, what I do is once they fill this out, I have an automation system. I use Infusionsoft and I actually, my marketing company builds out Infusionsoft for real estate agents so we can help you with that as well. And through our Infusionsoft platform, we have an email and a text that automatically goes out to the client saying, hey, you requested an estimate and here's why it may not be accurate. So we're not doing a bait and switch. We're saying we gave you the estimate based on automatic calculations, but we haven't seen your house and we don't know what, what's really happening in that area. And, and Zillow is using a much wider area than we necessarily would when we create your home valuation. So to get a more accurate valuation, call us, let us come see your house. You know, so we're, we're not, um, we're not in the business of bashing platforms like Zillow, but we are saying, Hey, it's probably not the most accurate way to get a home value on your house. And so people respond well to that. And we have that, we'll do it on video and through text and through email in our follow-up systems automatically. So you definitely want to have this. You want to have call to actions all throughout your website that say, find out what your home is worth. In fact, if you look at our, um, our website up in the menu, we have house value offers on every single page. And then we will also include those calls to action um, within our blog posts and pages that say, hey, take our 15 second home value estimate. Even right here in our little grid, and you can see this on a mobile device, it looks fantastic. You can see the estimated home value 
Um, let me see if I can shrink that down for you there. Okay, there you go. So this is what it's going to look like on mobile. So they have this little search widget that stays on top of the website, which by the way, gets the prime, gets most of the clicks on almost every page. Huge value right here. If you haven't done this yet, you want to get one of those widgets to stay on the top of your page. And then they have the estimated home value they can click on to find out how much their, their home is worth, okay? So we're constantly focused on buyers and sellers when we're building our website. Although yes, the primary is always going to be buyers searching on the web first. Um, but when sellers do want to sell, they start looking up home prices and home value. So you want to be there when they start searching for you, right? So that's another thing you want to be building out on your website. You also want to be building out, um, homes for sale pages by feature, by price. Okay. So these are different than community pages where you're talking all about a community and what the community offers and when it was built and what the location and the schools. No, these are just IDX pages. These little houses, the grid here, this is being fed through IDX, which is your internet data exchange. So listings go into the MLS, they syndicate out, they, they're as part of this IDX system. And on your website, you're sharing this inventory as is every other real estate agent, as long as you have IDX in your area, which most do. And some have some special, some real special rules around it, but most of us have this. Okay. And those of us that do can build out these great pages. And I will tell you that these do really well on advertisements, Google ads, Facebook ads, um, Twitter ads, Pinterest ads, any of your kind of social ads, these do really well organically on the search engines for those that have a, a good search engine visibility or that you've built up some search engine recognition. You can rank for these pages as well when people do these searches. And they're really simple to build out. These are not complicated, but they do take time. You can't just rely on this widget up here for people to search. Those are not going to land you on the search engines. These pages have a have an opportunity to land on the search engines. And these pages are going to get more traffic on paid advertisement when you create the ad properly and target the ad properly. So we take the time to build out all of these pages, Las Vegas homes under 500,000, and then you can sort them by bedrooms and by bathrooms and by features. And um, we have, if you click up here on my homes for sale page, you can actually see the larger section and you can browse by price, number of bedrooms, the area, bathrooms, community, energy description, features, financing, golf, um, homes near a particular location. Like we do really well with things like homes for sale near UNLV, homes for sale near Zappos, homes for sale near um, the, uh, the hockey stadium or the... Um, I'm forgetting the newest one that just got put into, into, into Summerlin. Anyway, any of those big sports homes for sale near the sports stadium, these are very popular homes for sale by levels, which means single story, two story, three story, four story, um, subdivision homes by parking, which could, which is interesting because this is going to show you like three car garage, four car garage, electric car parking, RV parking, tandem parking, underground parking. What a lot of people don't realize is that you can build all these pages out as long as your MLS has the field and you're working with an IDX provider that allows you to pull in all of these fields, you can build out all of these specialty things that they're not going to find on a standard search widget. Well, what that does is it positions your website as more of the authority and more of a valuable resource for them to go to. Look, we are competing with Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia. Like it or not, these huge portals, we compete with them. You have to be better than just a search widget. You've got to be able to give these people more and give them what they want to be looking for so that they will return to your website again and again. So building out all of these homes for sale pages is key if you want to be working on your real estate agent website for value, for search engine rankings, for social shares, all of that. Okay. What else should you be doing with your real estate agent website? Um, paid advertising. So this would be Google AdWords. It could be Bing AdWords. It could be Pinterest, Twitter, um, could be LinkedIn. I mean, there's so many advertising platforms. I, I just threw out a few of those, of course, Facebook and Instagram and things like that. So you want to be uh, potentially not 
absolutely. There's a lot of organic uh, people that rank very well organically on the search engines like my website does that we don't necessarily put large budgets into pay-per-click marketing. Okay. Now the nice thing about it though, is it is a lever that you can pull if you need to get more leads. Okay. So I'm getting a few hundred leads a month organically through Google, bring the search engines. And let's just say I hire a new agent and I want to get them up running quickly. I could, I could put 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, whatever I want to put more towards paid advertisement and, and, and pull those leads up if I wanted to. Or let's just say I'm not ranking organically as well as I would like for this new luxury community that I want to, that I want to rank for. So I'm going to do some paid advertisement for that community so that I can start generating some traffic there while I'm building the organic search. So that's another reason to be building in your pay-per-click marketing and pay-per-click marketing like on Google would look something like, let me just type in San Diego waterfront homes, for example. It's going to be these, add, 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 things like that, okay? And as I said, you can also spend money marketing videos. YouTube has a sponsorship. There's all kinds of, of places where you can spend your advertising dollar. So if it makes sense for you, adding in pay-per-click marketing, Facebook ads, banner advertisements, that type of thing, um, I'm not a big fan of banner advertisements, but there's, there's some that work in the display network. Uh, with the search engines as well and with actually with Facebook and Instagram and you can um, you can have your brand show up on other um, on other display partners okay I'm gonna cover that in another video as well uh, another thing you should be doing with your real estate agent website is using video as much as you possibly can so let me show you this um, this one Here's an example of a, um, a blog post. So this is a hyper local blog post. So I wanted to do an article all about eating vegan in Vegas and, um, you know, the vegetarian style eating. And so here I've got this great blog post on the different locations, the really popular places that they can eat. And then I've included a video here that they can watch that shows um, a couple going all around Las Vegas, Las Vegas eating, um, eating, the, eating the vegan style. And what's interesting about this, a lot of people don't know that you can actually use other people's video on your website because YouTube has a permission to share on their platform. And if the person has, has not opted out of that, where they opt out to allow embedding, they've left it in, you actually have the permission to embed the video on your website. Now you can't change the video, you can't edit the video, but you can embed it. And what embedding video does is it increases dwell time which is how long somebody spends on your website. And this is a real positive signal to Google. It's a quality signal the longer somebody spends on your website. And so we want to encourage somebody to, to we want to make these visits longer, okay? So this is a really important component. So I include video anywhere I can and anywhere it makes sense. Um, and I will talk about it in, 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 in this series where to get ideas for blog posts and videos and things like that. Now, if you want to make your own videos, fantastic. If you're out in the field and you've got the ability to create your own videos, they don't have to be fancy. You don't have to use green screens. You just have to make the darn videos. Okay. I would tell you that lighting and audio are your two biggest issues. So if you're somewhere where it's dark, a, a little light would be um, beneficial. And I, I will talk about some of the tools that I use in, in another video as well. But audio is a really big deal. So little microphones, really simple. But other than that, you really do not need to worry about getting fancy. And most times your, your iPhone is going to be perfectly fine to record your video as is, especially if it's in the daytime and it's sunny, you're going to be good to go. So using lots and lots of video, okay? What else should you be doing with your real estate agent website? You should be gathering reviews. Now, this is another super, super positive signal to Google. This is a quality signal when you are gathering reviews. 
Now, one of the mistakes that I see agents make is that they gather all of their reviews on a platform like Zillow and they aren't they aren't gathering them anywhere else. That's their primary source. Now, one of the reasons why real estate agents do this is because uh, they don't want to give the client too many choices or they'll lose them. And I agree with this. I think it's really important to pick a primary spot to gather your reviews and then have your second and third uh, for those that that will leave it in more than one places. And I can talk about in another video how we set up our Infusionsoft campaign for reviews to allow for that, where we're using multiple emails instead of trying to get everything all in one shot. We're, we're backing it up with supportive emails after the fact. All right, so another reason why they gather all their reviews on a platform like Zillow is because that's where the buyers are. So I'm not opposed at all to gathering reviews on there. If that is where your dollars are going or that is where your leads are coming from, of course you want to stack reviews on there. It makes perfect sense. I would suggest having your own collection of reviews, even if it's a one line statement from your client, you could literally say before you close a week, we tend to get, we'll, we'll ask for reviews long before we close. We're kind of setting up that process, but we'll say, Hey, if you were to give us one sentence, one sentence about our, um, about uh, Krista on my team that you worked with, what would it be? And you could see something like this. She's very helpful, informative, and was kind enough to work around our schedules. You can get one sentence and you can get that by sending an email saying, Hey, can you give us one sentence? You can stand there and ask them. You can hand them a notepad. Will you write one sentence? Don't make it harder than it has to be. Well, then on this particular website, again, this is the brew that we build. We have a section for reviews where we can actually go in, enter the line that the person said, and if they gave us more than a, a line, that's great. We can add a picture either of them, or if we don't have a picture of them, we're using these little clip art um, photos, which work well too, people with thumbs up or five stars, as long as there's a photo there for the, for the graphics. And it is so easy. This is not, it's not as challenging as you think. You, agents make this more difficult because we're trying to get people to log into Zillow and put your info in there. You got to make it, make it easier. Now, if you build out this review section on your own website, you now have a chance of ranking when somebody Googles your brand for your own reviews page. Guys, this is so important. Brand search is huge. You want people Googling your brand. And if you're dealing with something like a seller and they're going to go online and Google your name, they want to see if they can find you and what you're doing. And if you don't have any brand reputation, you're going to have a hard time doing any bit, doing a lot of business. Well, Google has something here. If um, I'm logged in, let me see if I can pop open this. I'm not sure if, if I pop open an, a private window, if you can see it. So I'm just going to do it from here. So let's just say, for example, somebody types in Lori Ballantine reviews. Okay. Um, in this particular case, and you can look at this logged in or not logged in so that the personalized search is gone. One of the top things you're going to see is your Google business, Google my business page. If you have set this up and you want to set up your Google, my business page, which I'll go into detail on in this series as well. And you can see here, I've got 31 collected reviews on that particular page. This is, this is going to help you with Google's local pack on the search engines. It can help you Google. Google looks at links. It looks at linked reviews. And it also even, even picks up brand inflection, which is somebody talking positively or negatively about a brand on, um, on the internet. And so these reviews are growing and growing and growing and growing in importance. People are looking up reviews when they want to find out if they want to work for that business or hire that business. Okay. So you're going to see that now down here, Yelp is a beast. Um, and I don't actually promote Yelp reviews. I don't ask my clients to leave Yelp reviews, but sometimes they will. And uh, that's been the hardest one for me to bump out of the search engine so that I can get mine higher than that. But I was able to bump down um, Zillow and, and the other platforms. If somebody were to search my name, my website is right here at number two. So you're typically gonna see my own website at number one or number two for reviews. 
that's what we want to happen. You want your own website to own the search for your name and your business as much as possible, okay? And you have to be strategic about doing that by creating all of these pages. On my particular website, The Brew, these reviews are all added um, kind of like posts. It's quite simple. And each one of these posts then is its own page and each one of these reviews then ranks individually. So it's really powerful for, um, for, the, for search engines. And then also I have that automation again set up through Zapier and Buffer where every time we add a new review to the website, it says if I have a new review added to WordPress, then add it to Buffer so that it'll queue and post to my Facebook business page, to my Google business page, to my Pinterest, to my um, uh, whatever else, LinkedIn, what all those things that are set up in there. So it's automated. So that I, I, a lot of this work sounds really time consuming and some of it is really not and it's quite simple. Where content in general, writing blog posts are gonna be much more in depth. But don't worry, in this series, I'm gonna show you how to hire writers so that you won't have to worry about doing all of that by yourself. There's this fantastic thing called leverage and we can go out and find other people to do some of this stuff for us. You know, we're going to we're going to start off doing maybe some of it by ourselves because that's what we can afford and as we start generating more leads and more business through our real estate agent website, then we can start leveraging out more of those pieces. So it's important for us to start with a great platform such as the Rue here. Okay? What else is important to do with your real estate agent website? Track tracking okay we use a great tool called clicky and again if you do wind up with one of my websites the brew you'll set up your you'll have your own paid clicky account and we integrate this with your um with your brew so that you've got some automated tracking in here and what's nice about this is you're actually it's kind of like using google analytics but it's a dashboard where you can see all of your websites at once. It To me, it's much easier to gather the data that I need. Um, sometimes I need to go over to Google Analytics and drill down and set things up. But this is a great, quick idea of what's working. And so on the right-hand side here, I have my content sorted. And it's sorted by most popular down. So at a glance, I can look at my website and say, okay, what's working? Let's take a look at this. So my blog post about creating luck in a house is number one today. I'm only on today, okay? N number one today. So I've got a blog post that's all about, you know, the upside down horseshoe and the St. Joseph statue and um, uh, crystals and feng shui and things like that in the house. That's a very popular blog post, okay? And then when is spring break in Las Vegas? That's a hyper local blog post. As we were talking about earlier with hyperlocal, very powerful. People want to know when spring break is. So you're seeing some hyperlocal stuff, where to go see Easter egg hunts. And then this one's really cool here, this um, just listed in the 24 hours. This is actually a retargeting ad. Retargeting is something very powerful that you might want to consider doing with your paid advertising. And what this does for me is it says, anybody that has visited my website, um, or these particular pages, or these particular pages and not these pages. So for example, anybody that visited my website but did not land on the, the, the IDX thank you page. It means they were on the website but they did not register to look at IDX. So then I have this retargeting ad that goes out through uh, Google Pay-Per-Click that, that now runs an ad that says, see all homes listed in the last 24 hours. Actually, this one's through Facebook. See all homes that listed in the last 24 hours. And they're constantly logging back in. And the only people that would find that page, because I don't have it visible to the search engines, are people that have been on my website before, and it brings them back. So it's increasing visits to my website, which one, more reach to that individual potential customer. And two, it's also a positive signal to Google because repeat visits are viewed as a value, another value signal. And Google is all about making sure that you have the most value so that it's returning the most valuable uh, result in a search engine results page for its customers, right? And so that's also a very positive um, signal. Here's my real estate market report, which continuously does well in the search engines and brings in seller leads. 
here's a real estate blog post, the buyer missed the closing date, now what? Anyway, I could go on and on and on. When we talk about blog posts, I'll dive into that a lot more. Then I can see where my traffic sources are coming from. So my Google searches are way up. My brand direct, people searching my brand directly, or there, there's other variations of where direct comes from. Um, that's up. My advertising's up. My social media's up. My links are up. That's the kind of stuff you want to see. All that green is good, good, good. Then I can see where they're coming from, United States, Canada, United Kingdom. So those are my three primary sources, which helps me know where to spend my advertising dollars or where to spend my time, where my potential. And then you can click on those and drill down even into little tiny individual locations. So for example, cities, Las Vegas, Henderson, Miami. So I could start a whole marketing campaign if I wanted to targeting Miami people because many Miami, you know, Miami and Vegas are can, can definitely be uh, people that go back and forth, okay? Um, and so those are important to pay, pay attention to. I can also look at how people are searching and finding my websites. What keywords are they using? Now, this is only a small piece. It's not a large, it's not all of your data. It's a small piece, but it's nice to be able to at least see this small piece. Secure search is all the stuff that Google hides, so we can't see it. But underneath here, I can see somebody searched how to sell my house with St. Joseph, um, Las Vegas Easter events, real estate price, Las Vegas, Las Vegas themed hotels. And I can see how people are finding my website, which is nice. Now there is much, much more to this and I will cover this more in depth in this series in another video, but you definitely want to be having uh, analytics. You also want to take the time to go over to Google analytics. It's free and set up your tracking code and put that on your website. Okay, I'll cover the how-to on that, but you do want to have Google on Analytics. The other thing you want to make sure you also set up is your Google Search Console. Each of these have to be set up. Now, your Google Search Console is going to be where Google alerts you if your website has been hacked or if, um, it, if it's suddenly not visible any longer or any other reason. So here's an example of mine. It was having a, a, we were having an index coverage is, issue on one of our pages and we submitted something back to them. And here is my message that says um, it's either been handled or there's two new ones. Um, and sometimes these are just because we've actually um, selected it to not be visible to the search engine. So it might not, might not actually be a problem, but they're alerting us that it's there, okay? You can also, with Google Search Console, measure um, how your website has been indexed, how it's been crawled, and then you can also look at, um, well, there's so many things, but watch this. We'll go over to Search Analytics. I'm actually in the old platform here. There's a new one that's in beta right now, but I'll just leave it right here. And here you can also look at um, what your most popular pages are, what keywords are bringing you the most amount of traffic, okay? Now, trust me when I tell you, if you're just getting started, this stuff is not gonna mean a whole lot to you. It's going to take time. You're gonna be building out your website, whether you're working on search engine rankings or social media marketing, whatever, there's, there's a time to start gathering all this data. And at first, you're not gonna have any clue, probably, what to do with the data that you're seeing here. Okay, but it's important that you put in those tracking codes so that you're storing it. So when you get to the more advanced le level and you start learning what it is you want to be looking at on a regular basis in these reports and then what to do with them to scale your website traffic or to duplicate it on, in another market or whatever it is that you might be doing, you're going to have the data. But if you don't take the time to go put in those tracking codes, you're really going to be bummed because you're not going to know what it is to go back. Um, you're not going to have the data to go back and look at. Okay. Another cool thing I really like to do with my real estate website is watch, monitor my heat maps. Okay. Now this is another more advanced item. Uh, and it, it, but again, if you if you're tracking, you'll have the data when you get to the more advanced. Okay, um, this platform is called Hotjar, and there's lots of different heat map companies out there. Crazy Egg is another big one, and I I liked Crazy Egg. I just found it to be too expensive for um, the page views that I was needing, so I found something more affordable, which is Hotjar. I like some of the things better in Crazy Egg and some of the things better in Hotjar. But what I'm able to do here is I can scroll down to my heat maps. Okay. 
And let me just go to my um, real estate uh, website here. Hold on. Where's it at? Oh, up here. Uh, okay, there we go. Ballon Vegas. Oops, that's still the wrong one. I need HTTP. Oh, no, that's the right one. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to look at all of my heat maps. And then let me find one that's got a lot of um, action on it. Okay, let's just go ahead and look at this one. So here is a page on my website called New Homes Under 200,000. Well, what I can do then is I can view the heat map and I'm able to see where people clicked and scrolled. And I can look at it on a desktop or um, or mobile. So in this particular case, the smartphone is getting the most traffic. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. You're gonna find, depending on your market, your mobile's probably getting more views than your desktop. And that's actually what you want because what we know is over 50% of searches now are done on mobile. So if your website's not ranking on mobile or not being found on mobile, you might have an issue there, okay? So what we want to do is we want to make sure our web real estate agent website is mobile responsive. It's mobile friendly. Those are different. They're different things. I mean, create, we're creating content now for mobile, which we'll talk about on another video. But what we have here is I'm able to see, look at all these clicks up here. You guys remember I was talking about this search widget. Well, I don't just talk about things because I think they're true. I have the ed evidence to prove they're true. And that's how I make all of my decisions on how to build out my website further. So we tested this little search widget and we said, let's put the little search widget on top of every page where it doesn't move. And let's measure if our bounce rates go down, if our clicks go up. And sure enough, they did. And if you look here, so this is almost 10% of the clicks uh, on the whole page. 10% of the clicks go to this button. So 16, so we're gonna do 27% of the clicks, 37, 38% of the clicks, 48% of the clicks, 58, 64%, 74. Um, this is the part where I get stuck on the math. Okay, so over 80% of all the clicks on this page are up here. Do you see that? Huge, huge, I mean, massive. Well, probably one of the reasons this is happening, by the way, is because some I rank very high on the search engines for this page, even if the term doesn't match. And this is one of those tricky things when you start ranking on the search engines. Sometimes you'll have pages on your website that rank for all kinds of things that may not be as directly related to that page. So for example, if somebody searches homes for sale in Las Vegas under 200,000, they might land on this page and this page is new homes. They might actually want resale homes or they might want, they might have typed in home for sale in Las Vegas with three bedrooms and a pool and Google still believes this page is the authority on that particular thing. It happens all the time, but I'll show you how I know these on another video when we go into our SEO reports. And so this is saving me because if I didn't have this search widget here, they'd be bouncing off. They would click back they would go back to the search engine and they would perform a new search and that would derank me. Over time, Google would look at that. It's called pogo sticking where somebody does a search query, they land on a result, they go, they click through to the page, they don't like what they see and they click back. Well, that kind of pogo sticking is sends a negative quality, a bad, it's, 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 it sends a signal to Google saying your website is not quality for that particular search term. So over time, whatever that search term was, you will start dropping in the search engine rankings. But the fact that they stay here and they click and engage keeps me ranking for those terms regardless. Well, I would never know this if I didn't have heat maps set up, okay? So this is, a, a, again, it's a more advanced thing and we'll cover this in, an, in another lesson, but eventually that's something you wanna have with your real estate agent website. Clicky does offer heat maps. And um, we're actually looking at integrating heat maps with your brew system. We don't have that now that we can set up your hot jar for you so that you have it. We don't have anything built in yet. It's coming. 
Uh, we just haven't decided how we're going to set that up yet. And we're working with some third party vendors to see if we can have a, um, can set something up or if we need to build our own software. But it is something that I highly suggest that you have um, on your real estate agent website. If you want to have your main staple set up, you want to contact us page, right? You want to have some general seller articles and some general buyer articles, kind of have a library set up, even if they're not designed to rank super high on the search engines, you want to have them. And, um, and you want to be creating video and you always want to be talking about your website and driving traffic back here. So I think today this is a, a good summary of what it is that you want to be doing with your, um, with your website, uh, how much and how often is going to depend on your market, how competitive, competitive it is, how good the content is that you're creating. Some people can do really well once they have built out all those little showcase pages and those community pages. Um, they do really well with just one killer article a month. That's a you know a three thousand word article on um, on owner financing or seller financing or on the new loan program or the home for heroes financing or what is a casita? What is you know how to all you know the best places to live in Las Vegas or how to move to Las Vegas? All of those types of things. If you're doing one of those a month, it could be enough or it could be better than you doing little tiny cruddy posts that don't go anywhere on a daily basis. So we're going to talk about all of that in this series. So stay with us, enjoy the training. Um, if you want more training at home, check out rank like a boss, my training course. And if you want some help getting this stuff done for you, we are at ballonbrands.com. And please do remember Lori Ballon team. I'm with, I'm actually with Keller Williams for your real estate agent referrals. We serve Henderson, Las Vegas, North Las Vegas. So if anybody ever asks, who do you know that's in Las Vegas that does real estate, please mention Lori Ballon. We would appreciate that very much. Thanks for joining me today.